Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. The mindset that we bring to any situation plays a key part in overcoming challenges and really enjoying our unique paths in life. On Thoughtful Thursdays, I like to explore emotional topics that are relevant to CRNAs and other providers. I think of this as my therapy, and I hope you learn some tips and tricks that you can use along your own journey. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On-Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today, and now on with the show. Welcome to Thoughtful Thursdays on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and as always, I like to start these with a quote that gets me thinking. Theodore Leavitt once said, creativity is thinking up new things. Innovation is doing new things. And this has been a topic of great debate. Is it enough to simply be creative? Can you be creative and pass your ideas on to someone who is more of a doer? Or do you need to take care of your ideas yourself? There are many examples through history of both paths, and some of those lead to success while others lead to, well, not success. Creativity and innovation are two related but separate notions. Yes, innovation is what ultimately leads to inventions and growth of a company and society, but innovation doesn't happen without creative people on board. Creativity in and of itself is a wonderful thing. Last week, I talked about some of those benefits when I talked about creating your own artwork. No, you don't have to create artwork to actually be considered creative, but you do have to stretch your own intellectual boundaries. Creativity helps you to become a better problem solver, connect with your community, and become more aware of yourself and your own individual expression while also potentially relieving stress. Innovation, on the other hand, is the implementation or creation of something new that has realized value to others. That last bit is important, though. Uh, realized value to others. I would argue that there have been many inventions over the years that have failed due to their lack of application or value. Flying tanks, radioactive health products, and bonnet hair dryers are all examples of creativity that lacked applicable value. In fact, it's estimated that around 90% or more of patented inventions are never commercialized, licensed, or sold. Now, why is that? Well, There are three big reasons. Number one, as mentioned before, the invention has little to no inherent value. Number two, the inventor lacks the ability to get that invention to market. And number three, intellectual property protection for the invention is narrow and others can circumvent it. Now let's take that last point, property protection being narrow. When Thomas Edison invented the lamp, he patented his invention. However, this stimulated a surge in patenting for 20 plus years that pushed that technology forward. People tried to invent around Edison's invention, and that contributed to dynamic economic efficiency in the process. For a different real world example, I had the great idea when I was in my first undergrad of a clothing company. It would be called Funky Monkey. And I even made a single t-shirt that I gave to my wife that she has actually kept for the better part of 20 years. But what I failed to realize was that my idea was neither revolutionary nor protectable, at least not in a broad sense. I mean, really, funky monkey? Who couldn't come up with that one? Uh, Sure, I planned to have a product line with several clever ideas. Silly monkey, punky monkey, grumpy monkey and the like, but none of those ideas were actually revolutionary. They just happened to rhyme. Others could have simply invented or trademarked around them. And at the end of the day, it was actually kind of small-minded. While I had broad applications in mind for this idea, I didn't actually seek out any protections for those ideas. And that's the big thing. You have to file for license in order to keep others from stealing and benefiting from your idea. Sure, you don't have to be the first one to an idea. 
I like to think of Alan Jackson's It's Five O'Clock Somewhere song as a great example. But you do have to protect it. I guarantee you that no one sings about it being five o'clock somewhere now without Alan Jackson and Jimmy Buffett getting a cut of those profits. Now, this could easily sound like I'm advocating for a certain amount of shrewdness when it comes to creativity, but the truth is that you must be mindful of the bureaucracy that's involved with coming up with new ideas. If you don't educate yourself on the steps and pitfalls involved with bringing an idea to fruition, you'll ultimately fail. Creativity is not actually reality, though it's often considered a prerequisite for innovation, which is reality. Innovation is the actual implementation of creativity, and there are three broad categories for it. The first is business model. Now, this is internally focused on how an organization operates and creates revenue. I like to think of the Ford Corporation here. They utilize the assembly line to revolutionize manufacturing of complex machines. Products. This is nearly always tangible, although not always. These innovations make goods better or create entirely new products. Think of the iPhone as an extension of the mobile phone, for example, or marketing. Now, this creates new markets or increases existing market share. These are positively disruptive ways for brands to engage with customers. These may be different in nature or simply introducing customers to different ways to use the same old products. I kind of like to think of ketamine here as one of those examples. You see all these ketamine clinics coming on, and that's never been what its use was. But we're finding out more information about it as we continue to learn. So what does this mean for you? Well, even small tweaks to existing processes, products, or interactions can produce innovation. It's not some strange process or special individual that's required. It's merely follow-through. I can remember plenty of times that I cut the end of a nasal trumpet and put an ETT connector on it to provide a softer oral airway for patients. Did I ever think to patent that idea? Sure, I did. Did I ever follow through with that? Ah, heck no. And, and I'm not sure that anyone actually has. Uh, why would they? Because it's cheaper just to jimmy rig it than it is to buy specialized equipment. But does that mean that applications don't exist? I'm not saying that at all. I guess the point of this episode has been to not shy away from your creative side. We all have one, or we wouldn't be doing what we do. But make sure that you know the difference between being creative and being innovative. In short, innovation lies in the doing. Now, as always, I've provided some links for you to look through. Uh, I've also got a couple of books. Uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Where Good Ideas Come From, The History of Innovation by Stephen Johnson. If you found value today, make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. I also want to hear from you. If you have a question, comment, or topic that you'd like me to cover in an upcoming show, make sure you rate and review us on your podcast player. I check those all the time and cover those questions in future episodes. I hope you'll join us next time. This is Bobby Jones signing off. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.